Hello students, my name is John Sinkoko, an Associate Professor of Finance. Today, we are going to talk about BFN 104, Element of Banking. And the topic is Concept of Banking and the Nigerian Banking Sculpture. I expect you to give me a rapt attention. Our intended learning outcomes for this topic has to do with what is expected of you at the end of this class. So at the end of the class, students, you are expected to know the definition of a bank, you are expected to justify the establishment of the Central Bank of Nigeria, as well as you should be able to state the functions of commercial banks, that of the merchant banks, the functions of development banks, the functions of mortgage banks, and the functions of microfinance institutions. By introduction, by way of introduction, you should know or we know that the banking sector today is saddled with the responsibility of mobilizing funds from the surplus sector of Nigerian economy to the deficit sector of the economy. The Nigerian economy is fraught with the operations of various financial institutions, but the most influential of these institutions are the various banking institutions. This is because of the strategic role in financial intermediation outside the peculiar functions which they render for the growth and development of the economy. What then is a bank? Simply put, a bank is an outfit legally registered to accept funds and other valuables for safekeeping. If we now know what a bank is all about, what then is banking business? Banking is the process of legally organizing an outfit to create, safekeep, manage, and transfer money from one person to another, from one business to another business, or in a nutshell, between the surplus sector of the economy and the deficit economic agents. Now understand the definition of a bank and that of banking business, we can now look at the banking laws. Banking laws are put in place to ensure that banking business is not just for every term Dick and Harry. So the idea of banking and banking business is very complex and involves fiduciary and trust issues in high magnitude. Little wonder it is highly regulated, even at the global matches. So banking business is one of the most regulated businesses in the world. But I tell you, prior to 1952, 
that was described as free banking era, there was no such regulation or there was no such tight regulation. So people can just come up and establish what was then called as bank. When once you could raise a minimum of 25,000 as an indigenous bank, you go into banking business or 200,000, you go into expatriate banking. But the wagon has changed. It changed in 1952 with the establishment of banking, first banking ordinance. And that placed some restrictions to establishment of banking. You won't be surprised to hear that prior to that 1952, we had over 170 banks because it was free for all, free entry for all. But right, there are litigations now, there are regulations now that checkmate the entrance into the banking establishments. Today, we have the bank and other financial institutions decree, BOFIT number 25 of 1991, as amended. The decree clearly specified that any person desiring to undertake banking business in Nigeria shall apply in writing to the Serbian government to grant its license and shall accompany such application with the following. What are those requirements? One, a feasibility report of the proposed bank. Two, a draft copy of the memo at the memorandum and articles of association of the proposed bank. And thirdly, a list of the shareholders, directors, principal officers of the proposed bank and their particulars. And fourthly, the prescribed application fee and such other information that may be required from time to time by the Central Bank of Nigeria. What then is central banking? Central banking has to do with the coordination, has to do with the management of both the fiscal and the monetary policies of any economy to ensure stability of that economy. The central bank is a bank which constitutes the apex management of the banking system of its country, which performs as it best as it can in the managing the economic interest of that nation. Historically, Central Bank of Nigeria was established in 1958 was started operations in 1959. However, before its operation existed what was known as West African Currency Board, WACB, which was established in 1952. The board was established with functions that include one, to issue a West African currency, two, to ensure a speedy convertibility of the currency with the old silver currency. And thirdly, to provide a means whereby the colonial government would share from the process of the currency of issuance. The American currency board, no doubt, was fraught with limitations. And these limitations gave rise or way to the establishment of Central Bank of Nigeria as we have it today. It is important for us to look at these limitations of the West African currency board. Limitations include one, West African currency board could not engage in monetary policy management 
as a full-fledged research worker. Two, it failed to develop the Nigerian money and capital market because it sends its reserve to London. Don't forget, uh, colonial masters were still in control. So their interest was to repatriate the reserves to London, developing London at the express of Nigeria. The board failed to train Nigerians. Of course, it's an obvious issue. Their interest was not to train Nigerians, their interest was to train foreigners, the colonial masses. Fourthly, the board failed to invest its reserves and proceeds in Nigeria. Instead, it invested it in London. What an irony. Also, the operations were rigid because of the fixed parity between its currency issue and that of pounds. Their interest was to repatriate the pounds to London. So they had a fixed agenda, fixed parity of the, West the then West Africa currency and the pound sterling. So these were the limitations that made it impossible for them to perform or stand in the place of the central bank. Then, what are the cardinal functions of a central bank? Then we we'll look at the functions of Central Bank of Nigeria. The functions of Central Bank of Nigeria includes issuance of money in terms of notes and currency. It includes to ensure stability of the banking system. It also includes to ensure monetary policy is in place. And this monetary policy has to do with setting the requisite interest rate that will serve both the interest of the savers and that of the borrowers. It also included lender of last resort to commercial banks, as well as lender of last resort to the government. What then is the structure of Central Bank of Nigeria? The structure of Central Bank of Nigeria was put in place to enable the bank function well and meet its mandates. Central Bank of Nigeria has 28 departments and these departments are grouped into five directorates. The directorates are one, Corporate Services Directorate, Economic Policy Directorate, Financial System Stability Directorate, Governors Directorate, and the Operations Directorate. It is important to note that each of these directorates is headed by a Deputy Governor to reduce the pressure on the Central Bank Governor. Commercial Banking Activity what are commercial banks? Commercial banks are privately owned financial institutions that provide various financial services such as accepting deposits, advancing loans, credit creation, agency functions, and other financial services for the purpose of making profit. Don't forget the purpose or purposes of central bank is different from that of commercial bank. The three models of commercial banks that we have today sequel to the abolishment of the universal banking model by the then CBN governor, Sanusi Lamindo Sanusi. We now have three categorizations of commercial bank. We have the regional banks, we have the national banks, and we have the international banks. It suffices to mention some of these regional banks as we have them today. The regional banks that we have today include the Globus, the Suntrust, and the Providus. The national banks that we have today include the Citibank, the Ecobank, 
the Keystone Bank, the Polaris, the Stambic Bank, the Standard Chartered Bank, the Sterling Bank, the Titan Bank, that's Titan Titus, and the Unity Bank, as well as Wemmer Bank. Why the banks that fall into international banking model include the Access Bank, Fidelity Bank, FCMB, that's First City Monument Bank, First Bank, GT Bank, Union Bank, United Bank for Africa, and Zenith Bank International. What then are the functions of these commercial banks? What are their functions? Their functions are subdivided into primary functions and secondary functions. Those include deposit taking and granting of credit facilities, providing customers with facilities of foreign exchange deals, issuing letters of credit, undertaking safe custody of valuables, money transfer services, standing guarantee on behalf of its customers, support on behalf of its customers. Students, it is necessary for us to engage yourself on class activity now, having looked at the central banking activity, we looked at the commercial banking activity, and we also looked at the failure, what led to the failure of the West African Currency Board. So the class activity includes one, is there any spectacular difference between the functions of West African, the then West African Currency Board established in 1912 and that of the Central Bank of Nigeria as we have it today? If there is any, please do let me know by way of responding to this class activity. Secondly, compare the functions of the commercial banks that we have today with that of the Central Bank of Nigeria and see if there is any similarity or difference. With that, we'll go over, we'll continue with the remaining part of the lecture. What are merchant banks? Recall that commercial banks are also known as retail banks. Why merchant banks are known as what? Wholesale banks. So by way of definition, merchant banks are wholesale banks established to provide medium and large scale and specialized banking services to their clients at a profit. They cater primarily for the needs of large enterprises and high net worth individuals. So according to the Nigerian banking decree, as amended in 1979, merchant bank means any person who engages in wholesale, medium, and long-term financing, equipment leasing, debt factoring, investment management, issues and acceptance of bills and management of unit trusts. It's important to mention that merchant banks are also known as accepted houses. And good example of them in Nigeria today is Coronation Bank, FBN Quest Bank, FSDH Bank, Rand Bank, and Nova. The functions of merchant banks include raising of finance for their clients, corporate restructuring, discounting of bills of exchange, deposits, issue certificates of deposits which are purchased by commercial banks, and provision of long-term. Their functions also continues as loan syndication, underwriting issues of new shares, leasing services, banker acceptances, and advisory services to their development banks. Development banking is created 
to meet the development needs of certain vital sectors of the nation. It is important to note that there are key vital sectors of any economy, and in Nigeria today, we identify them as the industrial sector and the agricultural sector. So this sector needs to be propelled, needs to be given an impetus for growth and development. Arising from this, development banks are created to give credit facilities and advisory facilities to these key sectors in order to grow the economy. <clears throat> Functions of development bank therefore include provision of long-term and medium-term financing for the industry and projects. They also include preparation of feasibility studies on a consultancy basis for their clients, as well as provision of technical assistance for their clients. La, we also have the Mortgage Bank as a classification of banking. The Mortgage Banks are banks licensed financial institutions that specialize in granting loans to individuals and corporate bodies for the purpose of purchasing real estate, especially in relation to private residence. The functions of mortgage banks include, therefore, to provide long-term loans to individuals and estate developers for the purpose of building houses. One. Two to accept deposit from customers in order to encourage savings towards owning a house. To engage in building of houses, which they offer for sale of, also for sale to customers. And they also render advice to customers in relation to how use microfinance banks. The last but not the least, Microfinance banks are companies licensed by the Central Bank of Nigeria to carry on the business of providing financial services such as service and deposits, loans, domestic funds, transfer, and non-financial services to microfinance clients. What are their targets? Don't forget that merchant banks target large clients in this instance, microfinance banks target economically active poor, the low income earners, the unbanked, and the unserved. Such groups as the physically challenged women, youths, the informal sector operators, the micro entrepreneurs, and the subsistence farmers. The CBN therefore has provided for the establishment of different categories of microfinance banks. Today, we have three categories of microfinance banks. We have the unit microfinance banks, the state microfinance banks, and the national microfinance banks with different capital requirements. <laughs>